My beloved brothers and sisters, one thing we need to know is Allah has created in us needs. And these needs, in order to fulfill them, Allah Almighty wants us to call out to Him, to pray, to supplicate, to fast, to engage in acts of worship, and to be able to soften ourselves. So whenever there is a need within ourselves, we want something, even if we think we have the capacity to do it ourselves, always remember that capacity was given to you by Allah Almighty. That power can be snatched away at any time. Your strength, your energy, no matter your wealth, your position, your power, whatever you have, can be taken away in one second by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has done it to those before us. He can do it. He will do it. He shall do it. That is Allah. It's up to him. Why? Sometimes he does it as a form of punishment. Sometimes he does it as a test in order to soften us and to give us an opportunity to gain closeness to him. So at times there are things we want to achieve that seem to us impossible. But if we desperately want it, the question is, Will we be rewarded to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that which we think is not possible for a human being? The answer is obviously you will be rewarded because you are declaring the ability of Allah and the inability of man. For example, I ask Allah, oh Allah, grant me just for example, a million dollars. Now for someone whose income is a hundred, two hundred dollars a week or a month or whatever else it may be, it may seem impossible for Allah. Is it impossible? It's not impossible. Something can happen. And if you keep asking Allah and you keep asking Allah and you're a steadfast person and you try your best to please Allah, a lot of things will happen. Allah will give you something worth more than a million dollars or he might give you the million and more because Say he doesn't give me the million in this world. So I didn't get what I asked for. Allah Almighty will grant me a reward in the hereafter way beyond a million. He will become pleased with me way beyond a million. He will give me good health, happiness, contentment, good children, a lovely situation, beautiful, peaceful environment, etc., etc., which is priceless. Priceless means no matter what tag you put on it in terms of material value, this will be more. There are people who have the millions you are asking for. They have no sleep at night. They have no health. They are not happy. They are not content. Which is better? You want a million with no sleep or no million with good sleep? Nowadays, some of the youngsters might tell you, never mind the sleep, give me the million. <laughs> Allah grant us ease. Allahu Akbar. But to be very fair, Allah wants you to call out to him, make dua to him, ask him, read your salah, fulfill your zakah, give charity, Fast, for example, pray every day, pick up the Quran, the dhikr, the remembrance of Allah, declare the praise of Allah, continue. Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest, Allah is the greatest, Allah is able, He is capable, He will give me. The Prophet ﷺ says, when you are asking Allah, ask Him with certainty in your heart that He's going to give you what you want. You must. Then He says, Allah might not still give you that thing. What was the benefit? Why should I ask Allah when I think and I know in my mind and my heart that perhaps Allah might not give me what I'm asking? That's what the Prophet ﷺ says. He might not give you. The reality is he may not give you exactly what you're asking, but he will always give you better in a different way. In a different way. So I asked Allah, oh Allah, get me married to such and such a person. Is it permissible? Well, some of the scholars say you must always say if it is good for me, if it is better for my deen, my dunya, my akhirah, etc. But if you are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something specific, you need to remember that the goodness is you are calling out to one who you believe is able to give you. Already that is ibadah. Already that is an act of worship. You are asking one who you believe is able to give you while others are unable to give you. You are worshipping him. That is Allah. Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. So we ask Allah. We continue to seek from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the fact that you worshipped him in that way, he will grant you Jannah in return. Paradise in return. Listen to what the hadith says. Addu'a'u huwa al-ibadah. The calling out in supplication and dua, that is actually worshipping Allah. 
Because you are asking Allah. If someone asks you, can you give me five dollars? They're not worshipping you because they know that was given to you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is, there is a chain that comes to the person that can be seen. You can see how they earned the money, where it came from. With Allah, from nowhere, you are asking him, Oh Allah, grant me this. He has the capacity to give it to you miraculously without any form of chain of anything. That's the difference between Allah and others. When someone says, look, I invented the car. So what's the difference between me and Allah? I also made a car. Astaghfirullah, what did you use to make the car? You use the tin, you use the leather, you use the other wires and whatever and the batteries and all of that. You got it from other things that were already on earth. When Allah created when Allah wants to create something, He says, Be, and it is there already in front of Him. That's the difference. So we tell those who say they have created a car to stand on an open desert, for example, in an open desert and say, Be, and we want to see the Mercedes in front of them. Subhanallah. They will laugh because they know if they do that, they will be sent to the mental hospital. May Allah grant us all cure. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all those who are struggling with mental sickness and illness of any sort because the spectrum is very wide. But I'm sure you've understood the point I'm raising. So you ask Allah, oh Allah grant me this. He can give it to you. Still to this day, Allah says be and he will create from nothing. Awjadahu min al-adam. He has put things into place from nothing. Not even thin air because thin air is a creature of Allah. So if someone says, let's see out of thin air, thin air is already created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah grant us from his goodness and mercy. May Allah have mercy on all of us. Remember, call out to Allah. Even when you are doing something you believe is possible for you. I can do it. But I ask Allah, make it easy for me. Grant me acceptance. Give me the capacity to continue doing this. Help me in, in all ways. Be a humble person. Allah will bless you and continue to give you. I end off with a verse of the Quran. Allah says, La in shakartum la azidanakum. It's more than in more than one place in the Quran, but it's only a part of the verses. Where Allah says, If you are thankful, you show gratitude for what we gave you. How do you show gratitude? Worship Allah. Be humble. Give out in charity. Be a good person. Allah says, When you are humble, you are obedient. You try your best to seek the forgiveness of Allah wherever you faltered, but you make sure you are on the straight and narrow. Allah says that is gratitude. That is now thankfulness. When you show thankfulness, we give you more. When you thank Allah for 50, he gives you 500. When you thank him for 500, he gives you 5,000. It's not like a man or a boy sitting and saying, Oh Allah, I thank you for the 50. I thank you for the 50. I thank you for the 50. And he keeps saying, I thank you for the 50. And then he comes and he says, but I never got the 500. Because thankfulness is a life process. Number one, Allah gives you contentment. He makes you happy with how much you have. I have this, I'm going to budget according to it. You earned 50, you spent 40 and you still have 10 change. That's blessing. That's Allah giving you more. Some people earn 500 before you know it, they're in debt of another 500 and the week hasn't even passed. That is somehow disturbing may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us and grant us goodness aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabiyyina
Thank you so much for listening to the short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope. And the same applies to all of us. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.